comrades, with um, four weeks ago on the official election campaign, all indications are that the House of <coughs> will suffer a resounding defeat. The opinion polls, which have consistently sided against the government all year, do not reflect any, any level of enthusiasm for Kevin Rudd or support for Labor. Rather, there is a developing political shift underway that is driven above all by people's outrage over Howard's participation in the invasion and occupation of Iraq. This is a government which is widely understood to be mired in dishonesty and outright criminality. None of its desperate initiatives launched this year have made any impact, largely because in every instance, the reaction from ordinary people is one of outright scepticism and disbelief. This was certainly the immediate response to Howard's announcement in June that he was deploying soldiers and Australian Federal Police to the Northern Territory as part of his government's direct takeover of remote Aboriginal communities. I would like to focus my remarks tomorrow on this intervention and the related subject of so-called Aboriginal reconciliation. These issues raise critical questions concerning political perspective which go to the heart of our election campaign. <coughs> The Socialist Equality Party opposed the Northern Territory operation from the very outset. The Health Government's actions, as we explained, had nothing whatsoever to do with the stated purpose of protecting the welfare of Aboriginal children. In a comparable manner to which Canberra has launched its predatory takeovers of East Timor and the Solomon Islands under the banner of humanitarianism, Howard used the terrible social problems facing many Aboriginal communities as a cover to advance his pro-business agenda. Not a single additional dollar has been committed to education, health, and any other social service in the Northern Territory, while vast resources are presently being spent on draconian police measures. Howard claims his vast land grab and the anti welfare measures are aimed at including Aborigines in what he calls the mainstream economy. But what does this actually mean? What does this mean for impoverished Indigenous people living in remote areas? lacking basic social services and infrastructure. The answer was clearly outlined in a report which wasn't widely noted, but was nevertheless extremely significant. That was issued by Noel Pearson's Cape York Welfare Reform Project. In May, this project released a report titled From Hand Out to Hand Up. Written with the assistance of the right-wing think tank, the Centre for Independent Studies, the report concluded that the central aim had to be that of knocking Aborigines off what is crudely termed the welfare pedestal and creating a new pool of cheap labour for the mining and tourism industries. This is the real agenda behind the Northern Territory intervention. The SEP warned that the operation represented an, an attack not just against the Aboriginal population, but against the working class as a whole. The domestic deployment of the military, accompanied by Howard's ominous statement that constitutional niceties had to be cast aside, established a dangerous precedent for new forms of state repression. We also warned that the draconian anti-welfare restrictions being imposed on Aboriginal people would soon be extended to people of all races, something which has been very quickly confirmed, with single mothers across the country now subject to stepped up government surveillance and control. The Labor Party, as we know, issued its immediate and wholehearted backing for Howard's Northern Territory intervention. And similarly, every major media outlet backed the operation and ran a barrage of stories and Aboriginal child abuse that was deliberately designed to mislead and intimidate ordinary people. Opinion polls, however, nevertheless demonstrated that most people believe that Howard was acting because of the upcoming federal election, rather than because of any concern for the plight of Aboriginal children. This response caused considerable consternation in ruling circles. Things were not proceeding according to the script. We drew attention on the World Socialist website to a column written by the Australian's Glenn Milne, which reflected the growing nervousness. For this Murdoch columnist, it was, quote, simply vile to suggest that Howard would use the plight of small children for political purposes. If that truly is the case, Milne concluded, quote, as a political class, we may as well simply pack up and go home. We are barbarians without souls or hope of salvation. <laughs> well, as we know at the time, Mr. Milne, if the cap fits. 